director for the police department. Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, soon we're going to hear from Commissioner Outlaw. Uh, we're also going to be hearing from Staff Inspector Ernest Ramson, who's the commanding officer of the homicide unit. We're going to be providing an update on uh, three individual homicides, uh, homicide investigations that occurred in 2023 and providing updates on all of them. Uh, after, after Staff Inspector Ransom gives a rundown of the investigations, we're going to open it up briefly for Q&A afterwards. But I'm going to start with Commissioner Outlaw. Ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you. Happy New Year. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, we're here to, today to provide some pretty significant updates on several homicide cases that have occurred since the start of the year. Three separate incidents that resulted in the murders of five people. First, I want to give my deepest condolences to the families and the friends and the loved ones of the victims, all victims actually here in our city. We understand that no amount of justice can bring back their loved ones, but we have not and we will not rest until all of those responsible for terrorizing our city are taken into custody. Look, we know that violence is often a symptom of something much larger, a much larger problem. Where we find gun violence, we also find troubling activities such as group violence, narcotics use, narcotic sales, and quite frankly, urban decay. But with all of that said, What's most important is we cannot lose sight over the fact that it's the actual perpetrators of these heinous acts that are making the final decision to pull the trigger. And as you've probably heard us or me say time and time again, it's a very small percentage of individuals, of trigger pullers, that are responsible and are driving the largest proportion of crime, violent crime, here in our city. That's why we're here today. That's why our pinpoint strategy is so crucial to the reduction of violent crime in our city. As you know, pinpoint, Operation Pinpoint is our place-based strategy that takes a surgical approach to gun violence by focusing our resources strategically on our problematic people and places, as well as the underlying neighborhood conditions that we are seeing drive gun violence. Violent criminals have to be taken into custody. There have to be consequences. They must be held accountable. And that's exactly what we're announcing today. Before I turn it over to Staff, Staff Inspector Ernest Ransom, who's standing here to my left, he's the commanding officer of our homicide unit, I want to make one final point. While we continue to work on proactive violence reduction strategies here in the city, PPD always continues to work cases behind the scenes. Police operations often extend well beyond the work of police officers, and while sometimes unrecognized for their contributions to policing, our forensic investigators and our technicians play a very significant role in analyzing evidence and solving cases in our city. The work, quite frankly, just never stops. And although you might not hear us regularly, you might not see us or me on TV, it doesn't mean that we're not out here grinding, busting our asses, doing the work. And that's why it's important for us to share the updates on these homicide investigations because we need the community to know, we need families of our victims to know, we need these suspects to know that we're constantly working around the clock to ensure that those who are responsible for these crimes will be brought to justice. All across our city, along with our local, state, and federal partners, the women and men of this department are laser focused on investigating and apprehending those who seek to harm the people who live, work, and play in our beautiful city. And I just want to thank publicly each and every one of these professionals, especially ADA Joanne Pescator, who's standing behind me, Chief of Homicide at the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office, for their unwavering commitment to justice. And of course, I want to thank the community for their support and their assistance. Their help has been invaluable in bringing offenders to justice as well. So in that, I'm going to close. And please know, again, if you don't hear anything else today, please know that we will continue to work tirelessly to ensure that our great city is a safe place for all of us to live and prosper. Staff Inspector Ransom. Uh, good afternoon. First of all, our hearts go out to all the victims of these crimes. Uh, no one should go through this type of, these type of 
incidents. I just know that we, our hearts go out to them. So we're here to talk about the arrest of Edwin Vargas. He's a 24-year-old Hispanic male. On Monday, January the 9th, on the 7300 block of Rolling Street, there was a shooting incident uh, that resulted in four males being shot. Three of those males succumbed to their injuries. Uh, the fourth male was in the hospital in critical condition. As a result of good, strong police work, excellent detective work, and the utilization of technology, we, we were able to arrest Edwin um, of Argos. He was ultimately charged with three counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. I think it's important you understand what kind of individual Edwin was. On Tuesday, uh, January the 3rd, at about 1.51 a.m., which is six days prior to this quadruple shooting, there was a homicide at 900 West Hunting Park Avenue. The officers responded to that location. Uh, there was a car that crashed at that location, and inside the that car on the passenger seat was an unresponsive male. That male uh, was shot one time in the left side of the head. He succumbed to his injuries. This assignment was immediately assigned to Detective Janelle Craig, who is here as well. And within 14 days of this incident, she was able to put together the pieces that ultimately led to the arrest of Edwin uh, Vargas. That arrest occurred on seven, I'm out on 117. Unfortunately, that arrest came seven days too late because prior to that, on the 9th, Edwin Vargas was part of a group that, that shot up 6700 Baca Rolling Street and, four, and three individuals end up dying. Uh, we believe the motive in both of these incidents was domestic in nature, and that's what we have so far. Um, we received a number of tips, and I can hear, I'm here to tell you right now, the tips really, truly do work. Uh, if I can say anything to the public, please, we have put mechanisms, mechanisms in place that you can call us anonymously so you can give us the information we need to bring these, these jobs, uh, to close these jobs, and bring closures to the families as well. There was another incident at the 7150 Torresdale Avenue. This is at the Exxon gas station. Um, the decedent here was a 67-year-old uh, Asian male, a worker. Three males entered the store. One of the males produced a weapon and shot the uh, store clerk. He laid there dying as they could proceeded to rob him. As a result of that, we have three males of interest, and we believe we should be able to bring this to a close. And that particular incident was, again, a robbery as well. And again, the results of the closure of these cases not only come from good, excellent detective work, excellent patrol work, but also the tips that we receive from the tip hotline and also the calls we get from homicide as well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're now going to open it up to uh, questions. KJ. So when you say motive in connection to nature, what was the specific or what was the motive that you know for either or both? Well, that's still part of the investigation as well. But we, through our investigation, through the information that we received, through the notes of testimony, notes of interviews, we know it's uh, domestic in nature. And I so leave it at that. Essentially the victim here was it appears that way on the surface. On the 6700 block of Rolling Street, based on the videos that we have, we believe there's two other individuals involved. So this, this investigation has not stopped. And Janelle, so what's your relationship between these individuals? Are they related to each other? Are they close friends? We're not sure the direct relationship between them, but we just know there's some type of domestic incident, uh, domestic relation as well. Now, whether they are courteous to each other or they say hi to each other on the street, whatever the case may be, we just know there's some type of, some type of relationship. But well, that's still part of the investigation. The three uh, males of interest in the gas station, are, are they able to release their names or are they in custody? Uh, no, we cannot at this time. Okay. And are they in custody? Or? Yes, they are currently detained.
Are we talking about Edwin? Yeah, I'm sorry. I know about that. It's OK. We're still investigating that as well. Uh, based on his history, we don't know. But we will look into it. We're talking on Rolling Street. So we have a Chris, Christopher Batista. He's an 18 year old male. We have a Miguel Delgado. He's a 19 year old male. And we have a Miguel Santos. He is a 24, 24 year old male. I don't know if they're Dominican, but. Oh, the surviving victim, uh, we won't release that information. Oh, Hunton Park. Uh, his name is going to be, I'm sorry, give me a second here. Uh, Cesar Santos, a 28 year old male. No, ma'am. Again, that's part of the investigation, so I won't disclose that at this point. So it's not going to be cases for murder charges? That is correct. What I could say is myself, the commissioner, and some of the other deputies met with the ATF this morning. That was the subject of what we spoke about. We've been working very closely with the ATF, our TFOs, and some of our divisional detectives with Monco and Bucks on those burglaries where the guns were taken. We have recovered some of them guns in Philadelphia. There have been arrests, and they're part of open and ongoing cases. There are some still outstanding. So um, there have been several warrants served. There have been a number of them recovered. I don't have them numbers on me. Okay. But we are working very closely with them. Are they related to robberies? Even? Uh, there, was, there was one, I could tell you, that was related to a, a carjacking, um, a series of carjackings where an individual was charged. And he's been federally charged. Okay. Thank you very okay. much, folks. And I you know, just want to say again, if you have information on these homicides or anything else, please utilize our anonymous tip lines, 215-686-TIPS. 8477. You can also send text to that same number. Thank you very much.